Hey there, MSPs and IT pros. Welcome to the Rocket MSP Podcast, the show where we ask the tough questions. Today's episode is sponsored by Comet Backup. You can learn more about them in the show's description. Today, my guest is none other than Jim Lippy. Jim, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks, Steve. How are you doing? You know, I'm awesome, man. So I want to just dive right in. There's there's a lot that you have done with SAS alerts, and I'm dying to know more, man. Okay. Can you, can, before we dive in, I think you should tell everyone what is SAS alerts? Why should they use it? Yes, exactly. So first of all, Steve, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. You know, I think back, you know, We've been at this now for almost three years. So it'll be three years, January 21st, as we went GA, uh, general availability on mm -hmm. the software. And I want to say you and I spoke in the summer of that year, uh, 2021, and we've had maybe one other subsequent conversation since then, but we haven't spoken for a while. So there's definitely, I think, a lot to catch up on. So for those that don't know SAS alerts, we are a cybersecurity, cybersecurity platform that specifically monitors the user behavior around SaaS applications. So 365, Google Workspace, Salesforce, Dropbox, Slack, these are all applications that small businesses are using in droves. And we're, we are here to help MSPs protect those applications. One of the things that we believe at SaaS alerts is that there is a paradigm shift going on from a device in a premise-based approach to security to a user-based approach to cybersecurity. And we're here to help MSPs win on that transition from device-centric to user-centric. Um, we have a platform that is broken up into three specific modules. You get, when you work with us, you get all those modules. Uh, but it's manage, report, respond. The easy way to remember that, Steve, is MRR, manage, really? report, respond. Um, within manage, uh, we're going to talk about some additional functionality that we released back in August, and that's called Fortify. And uh, we also released, Steve, since the last time you and I spoke, something called Unify that also lives in the manage module. And what we, I'll just briefly touch on that before we get into, you know, Fortify. But what we've done with Unify is, I think, Steve, you know that we monitor the RMMs. Started actually with IT Glue, IT documentation, because it's such an important application for so many different MSPs out there. We wanted to make sure that MSP owners, you know, had some peace of mind around knowing what was going on specifically in that important application. And then we essentially went on to protect many of the leading RMM solutions out there today. First and only really with the goal of helping MSPs understand what was going on in RMMs, who was in there, what they were doing, what they were taking, and making sure that we were mitigating the, the threat of a supply chain attack. Well, then we found out as we were going through and learning that we can actually see all the device side information from the RMM agent via API. So what we did was we came out with Unify, which essentially allows the MSP to correlate all that device side information that we can see from the RMM agent and then correlate it with the SaaS security data that our platform inherently receives. And what that does is provides a very succinct and clear picture of what's going on with the user within the MSP's customer. So I'll give you an example, Steve. So let's just say your account, your 365 account is logging in from Paris. Well, we know that's a outside approval location for Steve. So, but you're also, let's just say you're um, on application, your uh, MSPs uh, using application, RMM application, let's just say it's, you know, VSA or Ninja or Audity, right? So what we can now see is Steve's logging in from Paris on his 365 account, but we know it's Steve's machine because we can see it through the RMM agent. Now, if it wasn't Steve's machine, and it's a, it's a machine that we do not recognize logging into Steve's account from Paris, then what you should be doing is using our respond module to actually create a rule 
that immediately locks that account. So what we do at SaaS search is we see all the information in real time. We alert on it, anything that's unusual. And then we're able to really dial in based on all the data we're seeing, both from the SaaS side and also correlating with the RMM agent information. And then allowing the MSP to create specific rules to take action. It doesn't matter if it's two o'clock in the afternoon or two o'clock in the morning. That all happens right now within SaaS alerts. With all that being said, that's stuff we've had. I'm just kind of going backwards a little bit, taking a step back for all of your listeners, because that's stuff we've had for a while. But in August, we released Fortify. And just to give you a first, a bit of an idea of one of the things that we do at SaaS search, whether it's an internal meeting or external, we always start with our why. Why do we exist as an organization? And I'll, and I'll repeat basically what I said before, that there's a, trans, a transition underway in cybersecurity from an on-prem and device-centric focus to a user behavior and account-centric approach. SaaS search is here to help MSPs went on this transition. And that also led us, you know, that, that vision, if you will, our mission as an organization led us to developing Fortify. So this is Glenn Holcomb from Mighty, Mighty Manatee. I actually saw him at IT Nation last week. And he says that Fortify doubled my security scores across all my clients within just a few clicks. Wow. So. How do you do it? So first, I just want to dig in because on, on the number side, Steve, because you and I haven't spoken for a long time and our numbers were vastly different the last time we spoke. So today we've got about 950 MSPs, uh, a little less than three years. And we now monitor over 1.7 million accounts. Visibility to another 400,000 over the next 90 days. This is how fast attraction is picking up around SaaS security. And then our, our net retention is 188%. So how does that work? Uh, because net retention, essentially we have, we bring customers on, they commit to, let's just say it's 500 users, got, you know, 1500 users in their total portfolio. They just keep adding. So this is, this is looking at essentially net retention is new logos plus expansion within the base minus churn equals net retention. Cool. So that's a common question. How can you have more than a hundred percent net retention? Well, it's because you're adding a lot faster within your existing portfolio mm -hmm. than your churn. All right. So I bring up the numbers to baseline of kind of where we were when we, you know, started talking, you and me started having conversations back in the summer of 2021. Um, but also really to thank the community for allowing us to grow so fast, you know, being the fuel for our rocket ship, so to speak. Um, you know, we have so many early adopting, early adopter MSPs that have helped us with unbelievable feedback and ideas. Um, and that's helped us really evolve the platform to where it is today. Hmm. Um, so again, the, the platform is made up of three modules, MRR, manage, report, respond. Uh, they do very different things, right? So manage is where Fortify lives, which we're going to get into here. It's also where Unify lives. We put those, that functionality in that manage module because that is where you can go in and basically configure all your customers, right? It's where you can write down to the individual user, you can set security thresholds. Um, you add applications, right? You whitelist locations. So that's all happening and managed. Report is where you're demonstrating the value that you provide as MSP every single day to your customer. Showing them where the force attacks are coming, showing them who's downloading excessive amounts of information, 
Maybe they should be, maybe they shouldn't be. That's up to the customer to decide, but that's information you're bringing to them. Um, showing them where basically all the vulnerabilities are within their SaaS environment. And then respond is the automated remediation. That's the customized rules engine that allows a lot of people to sleep better at night, knowing that if something unusual is happening, then the software is going to immediately respond. We do not need to wait for eyes on glass to respond to an incident. So an example, Steve, a respond rule might be Steve logs in from an outside approved location and within five minutes on that, on your account, email forwarding rule set up. Lock account. Yeah. Um, or it's a combination of outside approval location, machine we don't recognize, email forwarding rule, lock account. There's endless number of combinations at this point to create rules. And we've actually created a number of templates um, that a lot of our MSPs have essentially put into the system for other MSPs to use. So I like that. Yeah, it's cool. And we're going to basically, we're going to expand on that quite a bit and really kind of create a, an app store type of marketplace where you're going to be able to benefit from the entire community that we're building. Hmm. Very nice. Wow. Um, so we've kind of teased Fortify enough, so we'll kind of dive into it. Uh, Fortify allows you, the MSP, to go in, benchmark, or excuse me, understand where your existing customers are with their security score. So you can see it. And I can tell you right now that we've gotten just over 3,500 tenants right now in Fortify. The average score, you want to guess what the average score is, Steve? 13%. 13? <laughs> You're kind of a pessimist, aren't you? I really am. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad, Steve. Okay. Although, although we have seen a zero. <laughs> Believe it yeah. or not, we've seen a zero. Though the average score is a 44.2. Very cool. Now, now uh, refresh my memory. Is this... Microsoft's secure score, or is this your own? So we've actually created our own secure score. Okay. Um, and that's getting better and better because there's, you know, Microsoft's only gives you credit for things that are done within Microsoft. That's true. That yeah, because you guys, you guys do a bunch of stuff. Dropbox, Google. I think you do Salesforce. I mean, there's there's yeah. a lot of things that you do. So that makes right. sense. So that's actually evolving quite a bit. Um. And we're going to be, or it'll end up being a Fortify score in the end. Um, but you can also see there's, there's a benchmarking, collecting benchmarking data. We're also going to, uh, in the next, probably in Q1, what we'll be able to benchmark across all sorts of different companies. So mm -hmm. you can share with your customer exactly where they stand relative to, you know, other organizations. So that's, uh, that's coming in Q1, but the average, like I mentioned before, the average score right now is a 44.2. That being said, the average number of points that we can increase a security score is between 35 and 40. Hmm. And that's essentially by going through, you know, recommended actions that we now know, you know, we know our best practices. And if you, you know, click a few buttons, essentially you can enact, you know, those recommended actions and increase that score. You, so you can take right. it essentially from a 44 to an 84. Um, so right here, what we can see is, you know, this includes the org status, the licensing info, and, and again, the, the security score. Um, you know, and then you can kind of like, dig dig deeper a little bit here and you can start looking at you know what the actions are and how they impact the score okay um and then 
you know, this, the, the great thing about recommended actions is it can be applied to one customer or a hundred customer or a thousand, 10,000 all at once. So you can imagine, you can start envisioning Steve, right? Like the, the labor savings associated with Fortify. Hmm. And then we can get into, okay, you know, an assessment here and that kind of score distribution. So the, the score here is a 30, uh, 37.33. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you can start looking at, okay, you know, what the potential scores by license would be. So, you know, you've got your recommended actions, so it goes up to this, but then what if you added, you know, Microsoft Defender for Office 365 P1, right? You can take it from, you know, where it is in this case to an 88.4. Okay. So, so that's down in the bottom right there where yeah. it shows you just by changing the license that increases your score. Correct. But, but just because you've changed the license, like, okay, so right now we've got Azure Active Directory free. Yep. And by adding Microsoft Defender for Office 365 P1, that increases the score 47%. Yep. But like, don't we have to configure it? Well, the, that's where the recommended actions are. Okay. So you mean configure Defender? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, once, once you buy that, you'll have to bring it in and, you know, do what you need to do to, um, make it work within your customer's environment, but the recommended actions plus, you know, the recommended actions that Fortify suggest plus, you know, if you want to take it even higher, add some additional licensing that will increase your score. This is what this is demonstrating here. Gotcha. Okay. So with the recommended actions, we, we have to do that stuff manually, right? Your, your platform is not doing it for us. No, it is actually doing it for you. Ooh. Okay. So this is like where the use cases come in, right? So you need to improve the security score for a hundred organizations. You can do that in minutes because the software is doing it for you. Uh, you want to track configuration drift that happens, right? So now you've got everyone to a baseline that you want, a baseline score that makes sense based on the configuration you want for your customers. Well, things happen, things change, configurations drift. We're going to monitor that drift for you. Okay. And then, you know, ultimately this is all about demonstrating value to the customer. So you want to show your customers how you actively manage their security posture. And that's being done here. Got it. Now, one of the great things, if I'm an MSP, right? Like this creates a lot more stickiness because now, you know what? There's 950 or so MSPs on SaaS search today. Mm-hmm. The combination of all these different things we've been talking about. Well, if you're custom, I'm an MSP and my customer, let's just say is potentially talking about moving off of me, I can say, Hey, look, this is, we've been doing all of this for you. And once you leave us, our tools come off and everything goes back to the way we found it. All the improvements that were made essentially go by the boards. So is that a default thing or is that we can just say, that's a Un- undo everything. No, that's a default thing. Well, no. Okay. Is that so for the, you know, you know, there's going to be people on, on both sides of the fence here, right? So yep. can I say, I don't want to do that? No. Okay. It, it, it's just default as part of the way it works. Like once you stop using the software, then, yeah, those, all those improvements that were made are gone, that were used, that were leveraged using the software. 
Um, okay. So these are the, the use cases um, around specific rounds, you know, four to five. So it's been a bit of a game changer when you add it into everything else that we do. The MSP, because it's now it's, it's rounding out the platform even more. I would say, Steve, when you and I first spoke in, in the summer of 21, we were a product. And now I believe that we were a platform. Hmm. Okay. And I can say that because we now have, you know, back then we had one module. I think we may, maybe just come out with version one of reporting. Um, but we are, you know, one, one and a half modules. We were looking at maybe 50 different events. Mm -hmm. Today we look, we're well over 250 events and we have three modules plus the additional functionality of fortify and unify within manage. So that's why I believe that, you know, we're a platform today. That's, that's pretty awesome, man. You, well, you guys have come a long way. Well, you're, you know, you're a part of our journey. You were, you reached out really early on, um, which we, we appreciate. Um, so do you have any questions specific to, you know, fortify that we haven't covered? Uh, happy to answer because there's other things we can be moving on to. Oh man, I've got a bunch of questions. Let me, let me look through them real quick and see if there's yeah. any that I don't feel like it answered. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'll recap them as well as I look through this. Okay, so cool. you, you make it easier for MSPs to implement Microsoft's recommended security actions and benchmark security scores, mainly because you've already got a bunch of recommendations built into your system. You've got your own security score, uh, based on things that you recommend MSPs do at the platform. Um, Auto automated policy templates. Uh, that's not really Fortify, though. That's the, that's the response. Right? That's Unify, right? Or oh, response. that's response. Yep. Okay. Um, and then you've even got the ability for MSPs to share their policy templates. Is that now or in the future soon? Well, right now in response, you can go in and pick you know, a number of different templates that people have already okay. We, we've, we've had several contests around, you know, we've, we've given prizes to folks for creating great respond templates. And, um, you know, ultimately what we're doing is we're coming out with, this will probably be in the next month or two, we're coming out with, uh, fortify templates as well. Very nice. All right. And then, uh, does, does your. Sorry, do your pre-built policy templates align to any major compliance regulations, frameworks, controls? Yeah, we're currently working with CIS on that. Wonderful. And then with your reporting, does that, will that report, uh, I, I don't know, not necessarily an, an official audit, but will it, will it like align uh, the CIS controls along with how it's configured and kind of show us if, if we're auditing pass fail kind of thing. Right. That's a great question. We're in conversations around these topics right now. And, um, I believe that in the not too distant future, this type of reporting will exist within Sasslers. Okay, great. Let's, let's see what else you got. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna move to the integrations that we have. Can you now see this, Steve? I can. Okay. So a lot of people ask, you know, okay, what do you cover today? And here it is in one slide. So up top, you've got the end user applications, if you will. Mm -hmm. Obviously 365 is, is a massive one for most MSPs. Uh, but then I mentioned before, you know, we monitor the MSP tools and yeah, I know there's probably a lot of people listening and watching right now where they recognize a lot of these tools 
and I'm sure they're using, you know, at least one of them. So for those mm-hmm. listening, it could be, it's, you know, VSA from Kasei, it's Ninja One, it's IT Glue, it's ConnectWise. Um, we integrate with ConnectWise PSA, Autotask, and BMS, um, but we also monitor for unusual behavior inside of VSA, Ninja One, IT Glue, Synchro, Data RMM, Automate, and um, we recently just finished a integration with Rocket Cyber as well. So if you want a full fudge sock and you want someone essentially responding to alerts um, and you already own Rocket Cyber, um, then essentially you can add us, essentially do a deal with SAS alerts based on the integration all of those alerts will flow to rocket cyber. All right. Now, um, what about halo PSA? Is that coming down the pike? Yeah, so it is. And I believe that it'll be in play by January, uh, late January, um, maybe even sooner. So. We've got a massive announcement coming out on December 7th. Mm-hmm. It's something called App Wizard. And I'll just say at that point, we'll be able to add integrations and we'll be able to monitor new applications as long as they have a viable API. And I need to preface it by saying that because not every application out there truly has a viable API. Like there's certain things we just can't get from certain applications, right? Sure. Um, So as long as that's in place, we'll be able to add a lot more applications into the mix in a very short period of time. Now, who will be responsible for adding those, the MSP or you? No, we do. So it's at this point, it's a request-based process where the MSP will make the request. I'm just making up an application now. Let's just say it's, the uh, well, you brought up Halo, could be Halo. It could be NetSuite for one of their customers, right? Or mm-hmm. a smart sheet and, or Okta, right? So <laughs> we duo. So the request comes in as soon as we look at it, we'll be able to determine whether or not there's a viable API there. Then we start working on it. And within short order, we'll be able to add it to the platform. And that becomes another value add that you're providing to your customer. Let's talk about Microsoft 365 real quick. Yeah. So it would make sense for sure that that you're able to monitor and manage things like users and groups but but what about all of the different admin centers within microsoft so that could be everything from exchange uh you know maybe maybe adding like rules into exchange not necessarily a user-based thing Mm -hmm. or intune or whatever it's called these days yeah and and all uh teams yes um are you able to to manage all of that stuff for us so we don't do anything that's on-prem. I just want to say that. So when you say exchange, sure. I really think on-prem. We, we, no, we, I, I mean the the Office 365 email. Yeah, so when we say 365, it's everything within the suite. So okay. it's email, it's OneDrive, it's SharePoint, it's Teams. It's all of it. Okay. Uh, Intune? Intune is going to be one of those that I believe will be a byproduct of App Wizard. Okay. Because I I think that, in my personal opinion, and I'm sure a lot of MSPs agree, uh, RMMs are going to go the way of the Dota. I, I agree with you that we are no longer focused on devices as much as we're focused on users. Mm-hmm. I think everything's moving to the cloud and it's it's going to make a lot more sense for MSPs to manage 
uh, end user or I'm sorry, end device uh, policies using something like Intune. Um, so knowing that that you guys could manage Intune, I almost feel like we could get rid of our RMM. I see, but I don't want to go that far because I'll say this. I believe RMMs provide a vital service to the community. Sure. And there's a lot of great things you can do still with an RMM. And look, yes, you'll be able to, you know, I don't know exactly when, but Intune will be something that we end up, you know, integrating with or monitoring. Microsoft doesn't make tools for our community. They are geared toward the enterprise. No, and and I I agree with that statement wholeheartedly, but you can't deny that um, RMMs. I mean, you you log into pick a, a big name RMM platform, and you look at the script library that they've got available for you, and it's like, hey, we we'll help clean up your Exchange two thousand library. Like, no, this this isn't helpful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, and I, I just think that, uh, unless, unless these RMMs really start to, uh, kick, kick it into overdrive when it comes to uh, connecting to cloud services and, and probably almost becoming a competitor to SAS alerts, they're, they're going to really start to fall behind. Mm -hmm. So I definitely understand your statement and agree that, you know, RMMs, first of all, let's face it. I mean, they were built for a time, um, that, you know, is well past. I think the good ones have evolved and they still provide a lot of great functionality. And I think that there's a long tail there. And I do believe that they're going to evolve, um, to the, you know, even, even more, um, to, to benefit and to really identify and manage the needs of the MSP community. Um, we're obviously here because we, we saw a hole in the market, Mm -hmm. right? You know, Pip, Seth, myself, the three founders of SAS alerts, we, we saw it, it was clear as day to us. And it's why, you know, we work with a lot of the RMMs, but you you can see the screen here. Yeah. We work with them because. We believe that we provide a valuable service in conjunction with them. Um, we're not out to replace them uh, because there's, you know, we don't look at the device. Um, we're just looking at the, the user. But as you say, that's where things are going. That's what we believe. That's what our why statement is all about. But there's still a place for the device. And I think the combination of the insight provided by looking at both the user and the device is something that's invaluable today. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, um, and then while you're looking at some questions, I can, uh, switch to another topic. No problem. So, uh, Darren said it really depends on your RMM. Some are much better than others and very useful in ways that can't be replicated easily. Totally agree with that statement. He said it better. you probably right. He, it, again, I'll say that for folks that are relying on Intune or thinking that Intune is going to be their savior, Microsoft doesn't give a second thought to the MSP community. They're thinking mm-hmm. about making tools for the enterprise admin. And that's ultimately why I believe that the RMMs will evolve and the good ones already have to Darren's point will evolve to essentially meeting those needs that people think Intune are going to solve for them. I love that you've opened up this sassy report because let me tell you, this is such a cool report. Um, I have, let me see here. I have, I have content that I, I wrote specifically for the sassy report. (laughs) Okay. Awesome. Um, so Steve, you know, because you've been, you know, following us for a while, 
this is something that we launched in our first year. So mm-hmm. um, we've now had three SAS reports, two SAS reports. Uh, no, it, it was um, so 20, 21, 22, 23. Yeah. And we've released it's an aggregation of data from our platform. So it's real. This isn't survey information. Right. This is real data. And yep. that's, I think, the most exciting thing for me because you're in everyone's cloud apps. So you you have all these facts. Right. It's it's not it's it's not uh, wild guesses. It's not assumptions. This is uh, facts based on data. Just so we're all on the same page here with with what we're going to be looking at with the SASE report. Exactly. What's SASE stand for, Jim? SAS Application Security Insights. Great. And, um, you know, the executive summary here, we augment with some information that comes from other places as well. Um, but, you know, the gist of it here, Steve, is that SAS applications aren't going anywhere. Uh, software companies are not, they're, they're no longer developing on-prem software. Everything people are building today it's it's the cloud. It's SaaS based, right? So we as a community need to understand that, understand that more and more folks are going to SaaS applications and then build a security practice around it. Um, so as you were saying, you know, this is all data collected from our platform. Okay. And so this was 23's report that comes out in March March of this past year was predicated on all the data in the platform in 2022. So January 1st to the 31st of 2022. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see there January 1st, December 31st. And it's from 728 MSP partners. That's how many partners we had in the platform at the time. Uh, looking at 979,000 end user accounts. Um, so this came out in March. So, you know, we're now up to like 1.7. Um, the number of small businesses being monitored at the time was, um, about 7,500. And we were close to a billion events logged. We're going to be, we're so far past that now. It's insane, but we don't have, we're not going to come out with the report until this March. So this is, we like to give data sets around 12 months. So, um, this is what we have from the, the, from last year, uh, the number of the users within inside the companies, because some people say, well, this is skewed towards, you know, small business or large business. It's actually everything. So everything from a, literally a one person company and the largest company in this data set it has got 11,700 users. So it really, this is, it's all about the MSP. It's all about their market. And some might say, well, 11,000 users, that's, that seems a little big for MSP. Believe it or not, I mean, there are, we've got some of the largest private equity backed MSPs on our platform today. Um, you know, Thrive, Logically, Antiva, BC3, ITS, Meriplex, I mean, they're all using us today um, and they rack up some pretty big customers. Um, so this is essentially where attacks are coming from or they, where they were coming from mostly in 2022. Okay. So China, Vietnam, India, Brazil, Korea. That's where most of your brute force attacks are coming from last year. Okay. Um, not a ton of surprise. Um, these are the folks that are trying to get in. And mm-hmm. then this, this page right here shows us the ones that are most successful in getting in. All so, right. What's interesting. So you're is, saying India is the most successful? Yes. Wow. Most I did th- not realize that India was as technologically advanced. Oh, yeah. Well, especially considering this, 
Look, they're number three in terms of tries, but they're mm. by far number one in terms of success. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it depends. On I, I mean, it leaves me in awe. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. it's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I agree. It. I agree. It. So, um, anyway, this is something that you know people find interesting. And by the way, you can go to our website and you can download this report or you can ask for this report. We'll send it to you. Um, cause it's fantastic to give to customers, right? Yeah. Um, and by the way, you know, we, we talk about the phishing attacks and stuff like that. I just want to take this opportunity, Steve, to talk about, you know, business email compromise. Mm -hmm. You know, people have started talking about it this year, but mo there's still a lot of folks out there calling up on ransomware. What is bad? the magnitude of the problem is vastly different. So you want to give any guesses, Steve, what the ransomware number was in 2022? Total, total funds recovered from ransomware activity? Um, I, I couldn't even begin to guess. We're in the billions, right? 493 million. Okay. Want to give a guess of what the in 2022, what the business email compromise number was? Higher. 2.7 billion. Yeah. So if we're not talking to our customers about business email compromise, we're doing ourselves and our customers a disservice. Hmm. Huh. I, I gotta say, I, I've got three facts that I pulled out of this report that I thought were fantastic. And you mentioned emails. One fact I found was that phishing attacks increased 61%. Yes. Going from 20, 2021 to 2022. And the report cites a study by Slash Next that analyzed billions of phishing links mm -hmm. and found over 255 million attacks in a six month period. Yes. That is mind blowing yes. to me. And that those can't all be directed at enterprise. I think there's so many folks out there, not MSPs because they, they fight the fight every single day, but a lot of MSPs customers, the ones that are refusing to put MFA on, right, that are just constantly thinking it never happened to me. They need to understand these numbers because the numbers that we're talking about, the magnitude we're talking about happens across the board. I don't care if you're a five person company or a 500 person company or a 5,000 person company, you're a target and you're getting attacked. So the other really interesting piece, right, is where are the, you know, the critical alerts. Mm -hmm. So everyone talks about noise and the ability to basically filter through the noise in order to do your jobs. Yeah. So we only, we only highlight or bring to the MSP's attention, critical and medium alerts. Critical because, medium. because there's so many low severity events that it would be looked at as noise. Yes. It, it, would, it would flood someone's system. Like we integrate okay. with PSAs, right? So, just imagine if all of those alerts became tickets in a PSA, it would, you know, it would kill it. Yeah. So the reality is that out of all of these events monitored, only 2.8% rise to the level of being notified. Hmm. But this is over a billion different events, this is a needle in the haystack game. And it really is. Yeah. And we really believe our philosophy is that when you're looking for needles in a haystack, you need automation to effectively do it. Eyes on glass won't cut it anymore. It's too mm -hmm. pervasive. 
you need the automation built into the software to be able to do it. I mean, let's just say, see, you, you know, there was a room full of hay and there, we put five needles in there. Would you rather sift through every, every strand of hay? Or what if I offered you a metal detector? I think you would take the metal detector. I, I hold out for that full body x-ray it's, thing that they do at the airport. <laughs> well said. So, you know, I think this is a really important slide, if you will, to understand, you know, that this is a needle a haystack game. It's important to leverage the automation, of, you know, in, in different products. And... And, you know, some of the, like an idea of a critical alert when, when you talk about that 1.4%, uh, critical alerts, you said are 1.4% of the total events, uh, that could be something like a file being opened or downloaded from a, an outside approved location. And that accounted for almost 30 and almost 18% of critical alerts respectively. Correct. Correct. So. Like right here, we'll just skip to it. The most common meeting alerts, you know, account locks, multiple authentication failures, and files that essentially or downloads that exceeded the limit. So one of the things that we look at is data loss prevention mm -hmm. in 365 and Google. And you can Salesforce and even as well. You can set thresholds where, and it can go right down to the employee. So, you know, a salesperson is going to have most likely a different threshold than the CFO because the CFO is constantly sending large files, you know, to and fro. But if a salesperson exceeds a threshold, you know, it's worth looking into. Especially if they've given two weeks notice. And, and I think what, what some MSPs might not realize is, you know, that your, your report even talks about how like 37% of over the 20 million files that were shared last, uh, yeah, last year were shared externally. 37% mm -hmm. were shared externally. Yep. Um, and that's an 18% increase from the previous year. And, and what people might not realize is external sharing is a major data exfiltration risk. Right. Exactly. I'm going to, so I have a, since we're talking about that, uh, I'm going to go right to it. Here you go. This is that slide. Oh, you've even got it down to files shared per hour. Yeah. Like that just makes me like nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> But oh. this is a really important one because most people don't really appreciate the security risk associated with file sharing. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that this number back when we did the first SASE report, so this is like, you know, three years ago, that number, the external number was 17%. <laughs> so, you know, it's gone up 20% in just a couple of years. So that's why tracking DLP, data loss prevention, is so important. You know, I don't know if you and I have spoken since we caught the tiny spiring. Have we spoken since then, Steve? No. So back in March, and this was documented in an MSSP alert article, our software, SAS Source, caught a Chinese spy ring. So we have a, a great partner, Frank over at ArcLight, Arc, Arc Light. He has got an MSP in Nebraska and he has, um, he was called in to do a security audit for a 300 person organization. Now the 300 person organization, they had a really sophisticated stock as a service in STEM. 
installed. And, but the internal IT folks more exactly comfortable with the results they were getting. So they had Frank from Arclight come in and do an assessment. He installed SAS alerts and within two days started seeing a not a, uh, unusual behavior anomalies. And there was one employee specifically that was sending anonymous file shares out of OneDrive and SharePoint to two specific IP addresses in China. Once the documents were, and these were sensitive documents, once they were downloaded in China, they were deleting the file shares, thinking they were deleting all the evidence. <laughs> but they weren't counting on the fact that SaaS source was in there. And so this, this was a legitimate employee, employee doing this? Yes. Wow. Inside. So is that technically espionage? Yes. It was handed over to the FBI. Wow. That's, I mean, that's really cool that you were able to, uh, you know, put, put that one in your, yeah, in your hat. Right. Right. That, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. I, I would never, and here's, here's where I, I start to get terrified, right? Because I don't even think about like, oh, okay. So I see some shares that shouldn't be there. I'll just remove the shares. Uh, I, like how, how would, how would you look at SAS alerts and see that this guy's creating shares, sending them to China, they're getting downloaded, and then he's removing the share. Like, how easy is that to see? It's very easy because we track it. It's just, it's one of the things, it came up as an alert. These, the, so he didn't even have to look for it. You just told him. Um, the software, yeah, the software just highlighted. They didn't have to look for it. They, they were just doing a normal assessment. And the software found. Wow. So great job, Jim. Well, I can't take credits the it's our awesome team that builds the product that, you know, gets the credit, but sure. And the partner, by the way, that was doing the assessment, um, that, you know, decided that this was something that, you know, they needed to be looking at. And now they use it in all their customers. And if you knew, I can't say what type of business this was because, you know, of sensitivities. Understood. Um, but if you knew what it was, you would be even more scared. And if you knew... I'm I'm you, assuming it was like a defense contractor or something like that then. I, I can't confirm or deny. Um, I can just tell you that's information that we would not want anyone in China to have. Yeah. Um, and I also am not going to mention the name of the security company that was supposedly looking for all this stuff, but never, never found it, never saw it. That would shock you as well. Hmm. So did, uh, your, your buddy, you said Frank, right? Frank. Yeah. Did, did your buddy get a new client out of this? Yeah. Yep. And not only that, but now he charges like $9 a user just for SAS alerts. Good for him. Eight or $9 a user in Nebraska, no less. <laughs> Man, th think of what you can do in New York City, guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, man. So I know we're running up on time, see, but this is just, you know, the kind of the distribution here um, that we see. Google, people on Google, they, fought, they share way more and way more externally. I see that, yeah. So now... Now it looks like it looks like the number total of files shared is significantly less 
but that's probably only because most MSPs are pushing Microsoft. Big time. So you're going to see a fraction of people on Google Workspace as you do on 365. Only about 3% of our total MSP partners today are using Google. I can't wait to see your, your next SASE report. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Because right now it's like, I don't know, we're processing a crazy amount of events every day. It's my yeah. bottle. Jim, this, yeah. this was phenomenal, man. I know you've got to go. Yep. But I, I seriously, I can't thank you enough for coming on here. And we got to do this more often. No, no more, no more wait in two years. I know. I know. It's always a pleasure, Steve. And, um, you're always going to be, you know, near and dear because you early on recognize the power of SAS alerts and, um, you want to know more and more and more. So we appreciate that. And we appreciate the opportunity to come on your, your podcast and, and talk about stuff. Pleasure is all mine. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and, uh, we'll catch you at the next episode. No, nothing next week. Enjoy your Thanksgiving guys. See you in two weeks.